At this point, Unreal Engine powers most of the video game industry, with everyone and their mother using Unreal Engine 4 this past generation. And who could blame them? Its suite of tools helped tremendously streamline development, saving both time and money, and even allowing indie developers to create rather impressive games with relatively small teams. And now we have the upcoming Unreal Engine 5, which should help both streamline and empower the development process even further. Like you, who should empower the subscribe button so that we can get to 90k by the end of the year. It's going to be incredibly exciting to see what developers can do with Unreal Engine 5. However, this has led some people to wonder if currently in development Unreal Engine 4 titles will see their way to Unreal Engine 5. In the case of Final Fantasy, this particularly applies to Final Fantasy 7 Remake 2, with a whole ton of people speculating that the second game in the series will be upgrading to Unreal Engine 5. After all, Epic has promised a smooth, seamless transition from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. Certainly, this means that an upcoming project like Remake 2 would probably use Unreal Engine 5, right? Despite it being a very popular notion that the next game will use Unreal Engine 5, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the exact opposite of what most people are saying. It's absolutely not going to use Unreal Engine 5, at least not for the second part. And after conferring with a few Unreal Engine developers, this is likely going to be the case. First and foremost, it's worth noting that when just going between two different versions of Unreal Engine 4, it can absolutely set your project back. In the case of the Switch version of Dragon Quest XI, they had to upgrade the version of Unreal Engine 4 they were using for Nintendo Switch support. This delayed the Switch version of the game up to about a year. And again, this was just two different versions of Unreal Engine 4. Many things change between just two versions of the same engine. Functions depreciate, their inner workings change, and at some point in development, usually toward the earlier side, you have to do what's called locking down the engine, which means there is is no upgrading the engine after that. Final Fantasy VII Remake is a game that launched in April 2020. So what version of Unreal Engine 4 do you think it was using? The version of Unreal Engine 4 that came out a year prior? In 2019, Unreal Engine 4.24? No, it was using Unreal Engine 4.18, the version of Unreal Engine that came out in October of 2017. And it's worth noting that the project restarted development May of of that year moving back in-house into Square Enix. All of this is to say that these engine locks happen very early into development. Final Fantasy VII Remake 2 is a game that's been in development since at least 2019, at least according to Yoshinori Kitase. That means that Part 2 has been in development for at least three years. The same amount of time between locking down the engine and the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's just extremely unlikely that they would update it this late into development it would cost them more than it would benefit the game. That being said, upgrading is nowhere near as necessary as you might think. For example, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate uses the same Unreal Engine 4.18 that the original game did. Co-director Naoki Hamaguchi describes this process in an interview with Epic Games, saying, quote, Since Final Fantasy VII Remake on the PS4 was based on Unreal Engine 4.18, naturally there wasn't support for future platforms such as the PS5 at the time. However, all we needed to do was to do a partial merge or implement a few unique items on our end based on the most recent version of Unreal Engine 4. And there was flexibility for expansion even from a slightly older version of Unreal Engine. Hamaguchi mentions that the solid state drive optimizations came in Unreal Engine 4.25, but with the engine of course being open source, they were able to take the features from 4.25 and re-implement them back into 4.18. And if you still don't get what I'm trying to illustrate here, it's that it's actually easier to take features from a newer Unreal Engine version and implement those back into a current Unreal Engine version than it is to update the entire project that's in mid to late development to the newest version of Unreal. And that the seamless transition mostly applies to titles that are built with Unreal Engine 4.25 or later and are at an early point in development with that transition in mind. This is also much easier 
easier to do if you are running a vanilla version of Unreal Engine 4, something that this project is not doing. Square Enix has customized Unreal Engine 4 for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1, and those customizations are also likely being used on Part 2, in fact it is probably more customized, and it makes very little sense to update a project that's likely in mid to late development and set things back for months to a year, all so that they can get some pretty marginal benefits. There's also a huge misconception that using Unreal Engine 4 would hold this game back graphically, and that's simply not true. A massive reason for this misconception, especially among Final Fantasy fans, has to do with an article containing misinformation, whose source was a Twitter thread, that did not contain a proper analysis of what was happening with the PlayStation 4 version's ability to load its environmental textures, which oftentimes were low resolution and had pop-in issues. Final Fantasy VII Remake lead technical programmer Tomohito Hano had this to say about the matter. In the PlayStation 4 version, we had to forgo using higher quality format and high resolution textures due to memory and disk capacity restrictions. However, we still didn't have enough disk capacity with Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate to include high quality format and high resolution textures. And so we integrated Oodle Texture Compression, and by using it in combination with Oodle Kraken, we were able to achieve a smaller file size on the PS5 version, even taking the higher resolution textures into account. So the issues with the game's textures on PlayStation 4 never had anything to do with an Unreal Engine bug. This is completely false, and this misinformation has spread to all corners of the internet, unfortunately. But also, engines don't determine how good a game looks nearly as much as people think that they do. All those fancy features that you see with Unreal Engine 5 actually have to be implemented into the project. There is a sort of myth that you can just flip on the ray tracing switch and all of a sudden the game will just look better, but that's not at all how these things work. The tools that are going to make creating open worlds much easier. Again, if they're past the pre-production phase and into the game's actual development, these tools probably aren't much use to them. People think that the engine itself literally determines what the game will look like, but that's not necessarily true. And how the engine renders can be a factor in the way the game overall looks. Really, it comes down to the shaders, the lighting, the materials, and all sorts of other effects. These are the things that predominantly determine whether a game looks good or not. If you were to take Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 or Part 2 and just import it directly into Unreal Engine 5, which you couldn't do without reworking some things in the first place, but if you did, it would look the same for the most part unless you're actually taking advantage of those features. Something that, again, would have to be determined at an earlier point in time, not something that you could just shoehorn in in a mid to late point in development. Hopefully this has been helpful in explaining why this game is not going to be using Unreal Engine 5, nor does it necessarily need to. Shout out to Patreon Accordial 8 and the rest of the Ultima community. Thank you.